Hi everyone, I'm George Cow, and I'm here with one of my clients, Michelle Olson. So happy to have her here to share with us some of the things that she's learned in our work together. I hope this video will encourage you and inspire you on to create and grow your own authentic business as well. Hi, Michelle. Good to have you here. Hi, George. Good to be here. Thanks for doing this. So um, I'm going to start with your your short bio, and then we'll we'll get into some of the lessons you've learned, and then we can also share with um, the, the, those who are watching this, how you work with clients, et cetera. So Michelle Olson is the founder and principal coach at Greenlight Coaching. Uh, Michelle is a purpose-based executive coach who helps successful mid-career women who are feeling tired from where they are at in their career right now and help them find clarity and activate their purpose during career transitions. And uh, before we started recording this video, um, I was talking with Michelle a little bit about what she means by uh, successful mid-career men who are, who, are, who are also tired. So can you say a bit more about that, Michelle? <laughs> so great. Thanks, George. Um, so what I mean by it is most of my ideal clients have um, followed an external authority found success based on the organization's definition of success. Mm. And they're like, okay, I've hit the milestones, but I feel really tired and I don't feel satisfied. And so they start to question what more could there be? And that more is mostly within the meaning purpose area, less so about more titles or more money. So mm. Um, so yeah, they, they hit fatigue. <laughs> yeah. Most, I, if I'd say most of my clients come to me and they're pretty tired. So, yeah. and I think it's cause they've given up on some part of their own internal wisdom or their own, um, connection with their higher self. You know, I didn't expect, uh, that I would ask you this question, but I think, I think it makes sense. Usually we talk about the lessons you've learned in our work together, but I also want to ask you, I mean, since we're talking about the, the these uh, the women that you serve, and I think that there are people in watching this video who can relate, um, maybe you can talk a bit about that. So when somebody is feeling lack of purpose in their career, um, I know you have so much work around this, but uh, what, what where do they start? I mean, how how do they get back to to the heart of what they really want to be doing? That's a good question. Um, you know, my first, my first um, intention with clients when they first start to work with me is to really slow down and, mm -hmm. and to create what I call a radical self-care plan. So I have, I encourage my clients to go internal first before external, because I think there's so much wisdom inside mm -hmm. ourselves. Um, with our connection to a higher power, the universe, whatever you want to call it. And so really deepening that connection. Mm. Um, so getting quiet, slowing down, uh, creating daily self-care self practices. That's where I say go first. Um, because usually they have already followed so much external information, goals. I mean, we're kind of set up that way if we think of it societally, right? We have 12 years of school that's mandatory. Um, we're based in a system that, you know, if you choose the public system or even the private system, you're having to follow the direction of the state and federal government rules around education. And then you're also having to follow the direction of your teacher. So there's a lot, and especially for women, there's a lot around following the rules, following the goals to get ahead. And, um, and so when you hit, when my clients hit that point, it's, so it's, you know, it's like, instead of looking outside, you know, go within. <laughs> So that would be my that would be my direction to start with anybody feeling that right now. Just slow down, and take some time to reconnect with yourself, um, first and foremost. Wonderful, that's great. Yeah. So uh, let's start talking about what are some of the things that you've learned, and how you've grown in our work together. Um, yeah. I'll let you start however you want. Yeah. Well, um, 
if anybody watching doesn't already know this, George is quite extraordinary. Um, I'll start by saying that. Um, you know, I've worked with a lot of different coaches and everyone brings their strengths. And the strength I find in working with you, George, is that um, you bring a simplicity to business. Like you have, you actually have, a, <laughs> it's like you have this, you can like hold a lot of complex ideas around business, but you simplify it. At least that's my experience as your mm. client. You simplify things and you help, when we do our one-to-one -one coaching, you help meet me where I am, which I, so appreciate. Um, but one of the, one of the largest or the biggest lessons I've learned from you is to listen to my audience. And you, you teach this to me both directly and indirectly. Um, you're always asking for feedback. <laughs> so yeah. after a session, it's an automated reminder, but you say, you know, how'd the session go after workshops I've done with you, how'd it go? What can I do better? What went well? What can I continue with? Um, so that's something I'm, I've been practicing more just on, I'm doing it on the phone with my clients ending each session. Like, what are you walking away with? What went well? Um, and I've just created a survey that you and I worked on and I'm about to send it out to help me think about offerings for this next year. Um, because what I was doing prior to that, and I've been doing this for quite a long time is just guessing, um, which sometimes it was right. I, Two went through a very um, radical career transition, had my own experience in that. So I could, at, in the early years, I could really zoom in on that because I was, I was fresh out of that experience. But now being on the other side for many years, now I'm realizing I really do need to hear from my ideal audience what they need. And that you have been um, just a really great guide and mentor for me. And if I'm feeling stuck or what should I do next? You, you know, usually you ask, well, what, what is your audience or what is your client saying or what yeah. does your audience need? And that's been yeah. super helpful and, and it's super great. simple. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, it it's the pressure it off. Yeah. And it's something that I think a lot of entrepreneurs, um, especially maybe purpose-based or heart-based entrepreneurs, we, we forget uh, because we're so excited about the idea that we have um, that we, sometimes don't take into account the perspective that our ideal audience might have. And one of the things that uh, we've been, you and I were talking about is, okay, what are some of the content yes. that your audience has found most helpful or most interesting? Yes. And do you want to say a bit more about that? Cause I think that is a kind of a, yeah. a teaching moment that I think others watching this will be, will find useful too. Yeah. Yeah. So this has been great. So one of the, benefits of working with you is I have finally gotten consistent with my marketing and um, th and your your um, teachings are around content authentic authentic yes. content marketing and so yeah. um, I've been consistent in that and what you and I were tr we've been tracking recently is what's what's landing and what's not and how I'm tracking that is through because um, I'm posting it on Facebook and LinkedIn and then um, what are people, you know, are people liking it? <laughs> like yeah. that's where I'm at right now. Still my audience is, you know, are people liking it? Are they commenting on it? And then um, it was great because recently you had me go through, I think we brainstormed several different topics that I tend to write on. And um, I'm, you know, currently saying, I think these are the top five. These are the, these are the ones I get the most response from. But the survey I'm about to send out we created 12. And so it'll be really interesting to see what people are saying um, in regards to that. I think yeah. the 12 that we chose were, was everything I mostly write about. And we'll see if it lands into the same top five that I've been tracking on social media. And is your survey something that is public? Is that something that I should include a link to, or is that just for your list? I haven't, I haven't, I haven't even outed it to my, uh, my list yet. Oh, okay. I hope to do that. Um, yeah. I hope to do that actually tomorrow, Friday. So yeah, yeah. So folks, join her list. <laughs> <laughs> and then, so, and, and one of the interesting observations that we saw when we were looking through your Facebook stats was that the content that got the most interest that you hadn't yet advertised, you hadn't yet boosted, you, you just posted it. Right. Was the content where you were sharing some kind of more personal story. 
Yes. So, so tell, tell us about that versus the stuff where you were just showing up as an expert, you know, right. et cetera. So, right. so talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, just a recent aha in our session. So I, I, um, uh, there are two, two recent pieces of content that I wrote one, which, which was a very personal story about sexism in the workplace that I didn't boost and actually got a lot more engagement than any, even some of the ones I had boosted or yeah. uh, at, what that means. If you don't know, Facebook advertising is, it just means you take the post and you uh, boost it to a particular audience that you choose in Facebook. Um, and then the other one was, uh, what was the other personal story? Was it about the? Can't remember. Oh yeah, I'm, I was thinking of that that first one you talked about. Yeah. But it was it was also something that you, it was some kind was it some kind of? Um, oh, I remember. Yeah. It was okay. So it was about um, uh, expecting obstacles. I was having this was a, a this was actually a content piece from about a year ago that I just reposted, mm -hmm. and I had shared just something personal in my life about how I was being in resistance to the obstacles that were showing up right and something helped me shift that and when i actually leaned into it so both in both instances it was it was me sharing how some of the practices i share in my own coaching i'm using yes. and um so it was it's eye-opening to uh to just remember that that for for people that probably are interested in working with me. They want to know my human side and that might be true for most people, but that was something yeah. we definitely were tracking. Yeah. I think that's definitely true for a lot of the folks watching this video who are creating, you know, what I call authentic businesses or businesses that come out of a deep place of, of meaning and service for, for the people they're trying to reach. So yeah, that's really great. Maybe what, if you're open to it, we can include the links to those two posts. Yeah. In the notes of the video so that, you know, those watching us can see the difference. Well, in, in, in fact, I mean, I'll put the link to your Facebook page so that they can look at your Facebook page and yeah. see what some of, because you have a lot of posts now, of course. And, yes. and a lot of them are where you are sharing useful, you know, kind of career reinvention advice or yeah. some of the more um, maybe emotional or spiritual sides of career reinvention um, yeah. and leadership. And so it's like, it, those are still important, I think. I mean, those are still helpful and it's still yeah. good to, to show up as, you know, hey, this is, this is what I'm good at. This is what I've talked to my clients about, you know. Yeah. Um, here's a tip that you might use. And at the same time, not forgetting to put in the, the vulnerable, the stories where you're willing to, to share vulnerably. And I always tell people, like, it's not just about when we share vulnerably, it's not just Oh, woe is me. You know, it's not just, <laughs> right. oh my God, I'm so negative. I'm so negative. Yeah. I'm so down. No, but it's, it's maybe, okay, woe is me, but here's what I did yeah. to lift myself back up. Or here's the perspective I got as a result of that so-called negative experience or, you know, that difficulty. Yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I'm looking forward to seeing to all of you, please go and look at the links in the notes of this and check out Michelle's page and kind of what, you know, the expert type post is, is good, is helpful. Yeah. And at the same time, some of the more personal stories that people really engage with. So, um, and uh, one of the things I'd love for you to talk about, actually, uh, one of the five things that we identified is the content that your audience seems to like and your clients to like the most is about the inner critic. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. I'm wanting you to share something about that because I know a lot of us watching this um, deal with that. Yeah. Especially maybe you can talk about it from the point of view of, you know, building a business and how does the inner critic show up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Um, yeah, I have it. So I'll say this. I haven't yet coached anyone who doesn't have an inner critic. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't yet met a colleague who doesn't yeah. have an inner critic. So yeah. it, it is, it's, it's, we all have it. So, um, yeah, I think that, and I think the reason too, it's important in, um, it comes up in anything, you know, any kind of change you're going after. So the focus I'm working on with people's career, um, transition is that 
when you're, when you're going towards something new and you're making a change, the inner critic gets really, really loud. And so I always tell clients, that's a good sign. (laughs) That means you are definitely in your, at your edge or beyond, right? Mm -hmm. So when, when the chatter gets loud, it's a good sign that you're, you're moving forward. Um, I also encourage my clients to create a relationship with the inner critic. You know, I take, some people take the view, like kick your inner critic to the curb or I like more of the gentle approach and thinking of the, how can we befriend the inner critic? How can we, um, go, oh, this, this part of myself is trying to protect me or keep me safe. And how can I acknowledge that lovingly and um, still stay in the driver's seat? You know, Jack Cornfield talks about that a lot. Like um, the Buddhist teacher, he says, you know, when the, when the chatter is going on, we say, thanks for your opinion. And so there's an acknowledgement of it but there isn't a collusion with it, right? And so, so here's my, you know, for me, my inner critic, how, so this coaching industry is um, changed a lot. George and I were just recently talking about, like when I started, you know, in the coaching industry about 10 years ago, most people had a sense of life coaches, but it still wasn't as new. Now, today, mo- you know, coaching is become like most people have heard of coaching. And um, how do I say this? <laughs> it's become this. Um, I'm going to say all the things I don't like about the coaching industry. Is that no. okay, George? <laughs> I, th- I think so I think I, my audience would be open. Your to that. audience will because yeah. I, I talk about that too. You talk about it. Yeah, that's why we're aligned. So I just think there's a way that the industry. Okay. So right now, tell me if I'm going off on too much of a tangent. Right mm-hmm. now, politically, part of what's happening is there's everything's you know there's the top one to two percent. Right. Mm -hmm. And that, and, and right now, politically, a lot of the focus is going on to the one to 2%. And, and, and that causes a lot of disharmony. It, It causes a lot of upset. And my opinion is that the coaching industry is mimicking Mm. (laughs) capitalism in, in not its best self in not its best setting. Mm. And so, um, uh, so what I have to always remind myself is someone who's uh, a mom first and a coach second and uh, loves the work I do, loves my clients, that I'm at my pacing, right? And every so often my inner critic will come in and compare me to some other coach out there who's doing something that looks grander than myself. And so one of the things I've appreciated about working with you is you're constantly on the forefront of naming authentic growth, authentic marketing, like you're a sound thinker in this area. And um, so I think it's important to remember like whatever your endeavor is, if you're building a business, you know, keep your blinders on, keep the focus on what you're doing and not in comparison to what is out there. Um, so that's been a big inner critic piece that I have had to work with and to just not let myself get lost in it and just keep focusing on, um, what I'm doing. So. That's beautiful. I so appreciate <laughs> that you said that because okay. I think Coming from you, it'll, uh, well, it'll land differently than just coming from me. Yeah. You know, so appreciate you, you saying that. So yeah. let's wrap up this conversation. I'd love for people to, to hear more about what you do with clients. Um, and maybe something you can mention is, and something we just, you and I talked about recently, is how you do your best work when you are able to commit to a client for, for, for longer than just one session. You're not one of those coaches that does like a one-off session and then, yeah. because you're really in it for the transformation that happens, yes. then that usually doesn't happen in one session. Yes. Um, and I think those who are, you who are coaches can relate to what I just said. Um, so uh, anyway, go ahead, and sh- go ahead and share anything you want about how, what kind of client you most love to work with and what do you love doing with them? Yeah, I love, uh, so I work with women. Um, 
And I love working with women mid-career. And I love working with women who really are up for something um, greater. And when I say greater, it doesn't have to look big and grand. <laughs> like what I mean is greater for themselves, self-defined, um, making some contribution that makes them feel good, creating some kind of work that feels like it has meaning. So I, I like working with women who really are up for um, creating a better relationship with themselves and work. You know, having, uh, I had a client years ago use this term and I've, I've stolen it from her, but no separation between who I am and the work I do. So like showing up as, you know, authentically in their personal life and then showing up authentically in their work life. And so, um, you know, and, and that can look or an array of things. Like it could actually mean someone changes their actual work in the world. It also has meant sometimes that people stay within an organization and then just move around in that organization. Um, and, you know, I, and it's, and there's been a couple of people who have stayed in their job. They've just created some other things outside of their life and that helped ease their relationship to their work life. So, um, I just, I really like meeting clients where they are and exploring with them. Um, I don't come with an agenda necessarily. I mean, I, I come with a, an approach and a coaching approach, but I don't come with an agenda, um, towards them around, this is what I think you should do. Um, so, and I have lots of tools that I use to help individuals explore and create more self-awareness. And a couple of the tools, uh, um, those probably have watching this have heard of is you're an expert. I think you're an expert in Myers-Briggs mm -hmm. personality typing as well as Enneagram. Yeah. Um, both are actually, those two are my favorite kind of personality typing systems that the ones yep. that I'm most familiar with. And I think you're extraordinary at those. And so um, those who are interested, you know, I, in fact, you're teaching an Enneagram workshop coming up, right? I am. An online Thank workshop. You. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Next uh, Thursday at 9.30 a.m. Pacific time. Yeah, and those who are watching this later, they'll hopefully be able to get by that workshop yeah. because you're gonna record it and it'll be available. Yep, and yep, agree. yeah. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Um, so I will be sure to put the link in, we've got a couple of links, I guess, we're gonna put in the, the notes of the video, your Facebook page, of course, your website, of course, a couple of the posts that we're gonna highlight and maybe the link to this workshop as well. Great. Um, Anything else you want to complete this conversation with anything other? No, I just want to honor you, George. I've been, you know, I've been working with you. Um, I'm going to cry. <laughs> I've been working with you for almost a year. And um, what I really appreciate is our, like, you know, um, how much business knowledge you've provided me and the support that you provide your clients. And I've, you know, I've also been part of your master heart group and George really gives a lot. So anybody watching you're in good hands if you choose oh, to work with him. Yeah. Thank you so much. Michelle. Yeah. What a joy to work with you. Yeah. Um, so I encourage everyone to, you know, go check out Michelle's page, learn from how she's doing her content. And if you are a, successful yet tired mid-career mid woman <laughs> who wants to kind of really bring purpose and meaning into your career, into your work, contact Michelle. If you know somebody, all of us probably know somebody like that. So think about somebody you can, uh, you can really help out by recommending them to talk to Michelle. And you offer, Michelle, for the, for the kind of client that you can really serve, you offer a complimentary yes. consultation. Absolutely. Um, yeah, for the right for the right kind of client. So yes. uh, anyway, thank you so much for yeah. the work you do. Yeah. And thanks for doing this conversation. And um, I look forward to seeing what folks say. So if you're watching this, please comment below and let us know something you learned or uh, any questions you have for Michelle. Great. Thanks, everyone. Bye for now. Bye.